With roughly 60 million Latinos in the U.S., we highlight Latinas of influence, businesses surviving to thrive. We talk culture, travel, health, wellness, music, entertainment, and of course, food. Our passion is to share inspiring stories with the community. I'm Richard Sandoval, and this is Hispanic Lifestyle. My name is Lola, and I play the violin. My name is Rachel, and I play viola. My name is Carla, and I play guitar. My name is Eileen, and I play guitar. My name is Cindy, and I play trumpet. Actually, yes, this is my first performance on this Grammy-nominated album. It's very exciting. It's very awesome. And I have to thank Cindy Shea for this, because it's a great opportunity. Um, as far as when I joined in the band, I want to say maybe like three years ago, around or so, so I joined band and then still here. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> I saw Mariachi Divas perform and I was just blown away. Like I loved it immediately because it wasn't just Mariachi, it was a fusion of a lot of different musics that I love, that I always listen to and to see it mixed into mixed in with mariachi uh, my basically like my home music was really cool so i um just i i just i had no like plan no ulterior motive i just went and bought a cd and talked to them after the show and cindy herself invited me it wasn't like i said oh i would love to join or oh i play this like i didn't even I, I never expected that she would want me, and so um, she she literally was the one that said, "Come join. When whenever you're in LA, let me know, and you can play with us." And I said, "You don't even know me," <laughs> but somehow, like I think we just knew. Like she and I both knew that like it would work. If I could jump in, something that a lot of people told me when I first invited her was, "What were you thinking?" She didn't audition, you didn't have a formal audition, you don't even know if she can read music, you don't know how she really plays. All these things, what are you thinking? Like, how can you just bring a stranger into our family, our world, and that came from our own divas? And inter interesting enough, those who said that are not here anymore, but she still is. Actually, the whole image of divas was something I, I really never thought about joining, and... I was more into the very, pro very like, how do you say, the world of mariachi where it's very traditional and everything, and this is completely not it. We're going towards it, they play sonas and everything, I love it, but I was not used to the hair down, the skirts, like being more feminine and all that, but I actually really liked it afterwards. Um, there's been... I a couple of tours that I've done with these girls. Cindy took me as soon as I joined the group onto one of the tours, and I remember that was kind of freaking teaching. out. She had to teach at conferences. And... and I am not the best reader at all. I struggle with still seeing, um, like, reading music and all that, but, I mean, she was working on it with me the whole way I think our first one was in Washington, right, Sin? Probably Wenatchee. <clears throat> and we had to give a clinic there. And I remember that on the airplane, too, she sat next to me and she's like, okay, you're going to have to do this, this, and that. And I'm like, these students probably read better than me, and they're younger. So it was, it was a lot of pressure, but I remember that she just doesn't give up on me. And that's probably one of the best. I joined almost three years ago. I met Cindy at one of the concerts by where I live. And uh, I asked her, can I join? And she comes, she goes, come to my house and audition. And that's exactly what I did. And she said, you basically have to take care of this restaurant gig for six months, because we're really busy and I'm not gonna see you. And that was exactly it. So <laughs> I didn't see her for about six months. <laughs> and then after that was when we really started getting down to practicing. And I think since then, I've grown into someone I never thought or imagined I would ever be. Like, I never thought I could go in front of people and perform, sing songs that I never imagined would be mariachi songs. All the English arrangements that she does, they're so beautiful. And I've just grown to, to learn so many things from her, vocally, from my instrument, to reading music. 
and I've grown into such a different person. I hope. <laughs> I hope. Well, Eileen actually participated on this album singing in Spanish and English, and she's one of the my go-tos when I need that, and which we do because obviously people love to hear some of the classics in English also. And she's got she's my little Etta James here in the, in the group right now. A very soulful voice I go to. Um, over the last 20 years, we probably had about a hundred divas or more uh, throughout all of, all the years that have come in and out of the band. It's a lot. And um, as far as Grammy nominations go, American Grammy nominations in total, we've had eight. And Latin Grammy nominations, there have been three. On the Latin Grammy nomination side, they have been for arranging, one of them, the best arrangement with an arrangement for a song that I played a fugón solo on, on a Jose Jose tribute album with Rigoberto Alfaro's arrangement. And then there were two songs written by Alberto Jiménez Maeda, uh, one of them with Ismael Gallegos and the other one with Paulina uh, Aguirre. And those were both song nominations for like best ranchera song del año for Latin Grammy. And all of the other nominations for, for American Grammy which is the same one as right now, which is the best uh, regional Mexican album of the year, including Tejano. This album, Mente Aniversario, 20th anniversary, was extremely special to me. They, a lot of people ask, well, what's the difference of this nomination from the others? Or if you won this one or wh whatnot, this album itself is so special to me because it's, it's truly a celebration put on an album. It's like if I had a reunion planned for all the divas to come out and and but instead we said okay it's not going to be a reunion in a park or a restaurant or a dinner meet me at the studio and that's what we did and i was able to call all the og divas back some of my most memorable you know favorite singers maybe um jump on this album and that's what i got to do you know having i mean the way that i talk about the girls from the past they don't know to the to the new ones oh when so-and-so used to do this, and when that person used to this, the way she presented that this song on stage, to actually have those names in front of these women say, oh, that's you, oh, that's you, and even, even, even be able to send a track all the way to Argentina for Lorena Lache, we called her, to record on this album because she was such an, an such a huge part of the beginning of Divas, to be able to send it over there, to have it uh, track sent to Angel in Tucson, Arizona, have her record, you know, uh, it was just beautiful to have so many involved, but there's one that was truly special. Uh, we call her Coco, Maria Villalobos. She's an OG diva. She's the first and only timbal player we had in Mariachi Divas. And I say only because I, after her, it was one of those people I couldn't replace. She was so special to the spot that we had for her that I said, this is how I want it left. I don't want her replaced. And we never brought timbales back in the band again. These girls think I'm strict now. I'm not that I'm so relaxed now. Back then it was just like, we didn't have the double group. We didn't have the two guitarron or the two vihuelas. It was like, you got to be committed here because I have a dream and you got to be on the same boat as me or you got to go somewhere else. That's how strict I was. So I called her for this anniversary album and I said, you know what, Coco? When we released our first album, I pulled those two songs off of it. Knowing that she had built her career, I wanted her to be able to save that second song for another big artist, and Oy Como Ayer, I wanted it to, to stay where it was. It was so big, I wanted her to have that, you know? And I said, it's been, what, 15 years since, you know, that album's released or whatever. I think it's time we put the song on. You know, artists, yeah. mariachis especially, like to do cover songs. Instead, though, of them saying it's a diva song, though, they're gonna say it's, oh, the divas recorded Conjunto Primavera song. I was fine with that, because I know where the storyline was, and I know who it came from, and I said, but not only do I want to put that song, Coco, I want to put the other song also, that, that it never got recorded anywhere else. And I want to keep them exactly the way they were recorded back when we did them. I'll find the old masters and I'll put them on with your voice singing them. Would, could I have the honor? And she was like very moved. Of course she said, yes, let's do right. it. And here we are, we got to put the songs exactly the way, the way they were recorded, the way they should have been put on the first album. And she's pretty much back in the band. We can call her for shows now if we want. And she knows that she's the only, only timba player we've ever had with the Divas and a lot of fun on concerts. 20 years plus, what are you doing? Where, where, where's this all going? Well, now we have our own recording studio. So now when we have an idea, we just, 
roll in 3 a.m. Call the girls. Hey, I got an idea. Let's record it. Let's let's get this idea going. Um, thanks to Oscar Villa, he made this huge studio for us, and we're able to now create music. My co-producer, and I think we're gonna make another album starting just about now. And it's our 21st. So what happens when you turn 21? Party it up. Party it up. So expect a very fun album. This isn't gonna be no sad songs, that's for sure. <laughs> How do I get my mariachi diva fix? Is are you guys on iTunes? Uh, where, where Everywhere. Do I get? Yes, I'm Spotify, streaming. iTunes, streaming, Apple Music, you know, Amazon. You can get the albums. Uh, of course, everybody's all over YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and We're all the Pandora. social media aspects. But as far as purchasing the album, of course, it's on all those elements. We have our own Pandora station. So, and the best part of Diva So, I think, is just come out to the live shows because there's nothing like a live show, and we need to support more live music and keep it alive. I think that's really important. We do. Yeah. Lachona. Contaré la historia de una famosa persona. Todos la conocen con el apodo de Chona. Todos la conocen con el apodo de Chona. Su marido dice ya no sé qué hacer con ella. Diario va a los bailes y se compra una botella. Diario va a los bailes y se compra una botella. Se arrancan las divas con la primera canción. Y la Chona luego, luego busca bailador. Y la Chona luego, luego busca bailador. La gente la mira y le empieza a gritar. Bravo, bravo Chona, nadie te puede igualar. Bravo, bravo Chona, nadie te puede igualar. Y la Chona se mueve y la gente le grita. No es mejor que la Chona para la quebradita. Y la Chona se mueve, ritmo que le toque. Ella vale de todo, nunca pierde su trabajo. Didn't get enough? There's always more at HispanicLifestyle.com. And follow us on your favorite social media platforms.